Hello, my name is Jim Niemeyer. I'm from Waupon, Wisconsin. I understand this is being uh, streamed live to Georgia? Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, are you, you guys are from Georgia, though, right? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, what I would like to say is that uh, we need to kill this bill because it's going to be devastating to the, the children in Wisconsin. We will be suffering. Uh, those students will not be able to get a good education. The class sizes will go up. Uh, they are going to eliminate uh, reading specialists. I could go on and on about uh, bad things about this bill. I'm encouraged that we will uh, win this battle, and I want everyone out there who's uh, seeing this everywhere to uh, understand that we will fight this until we win. There's a, a, a marble bust out there just uh, beyond where you can see uh, of the Capitol Rotunda on the, on the first floor, and that marble bust celebrates the life of Robert M. La Follette. Now, Robert M. La Follette, uh, is the only Wisconsin homegrown figure who became a national figure that is so honored in this Capitol building. There's only one marble bust on that floor out there, and there's a reason for that, because we have fought and won this battle before. In the early 1900s, Robert La Follette went after, fought hard, uh, worked for common people to break up the uh, trusts the robber baron monopolies that were in existence at the time. And he did it with ordinary people behind him, ordinary people like us. He had a difficult time. He didn't have email. He didn't have Facebook. He didn't have Twitter. Uh, he didn't have all those modern uh, blogs. Uh, he didn't have streaming like we have right here now. But he put people together and won that battle. I really take heart in that. And I bring this up because that marble bust of Robert M. La Follette over there, and I can see it, you can't, but I can see it, I take heart because that is affirmation. That is a powerful symbol of the fact that we have fought this battle before, and more importantly, we have won before. That's how we got these uh, collective bargaining rights. They began here in Wisconsin, and they began because of the work of Robert M. La Follette. Now, one of the things that people may not be aware of, I learned from Mr. Lay in my uh, ninth grade civics class in 1960. He taught us about Robert La Follette, and he taught us that uh, Robert La Follette was responsible for three major democratic innovations. Uh, they are initiative, referendum, and recall. I'm most interested in recall. And I think that uh, we are going to see some senators recalled here in the state of Wisconsin for uh, not representing the constituents that elected them. I'm a grandpa. I have five grandchildren. I'm retired. I'm here every day. I get here about 10 o'clock. Uh, I go down uh, past the uh, Espresso Royale Cafe. I buy a cup of coffee and uh, a scone, a blueberry scone, my favorite, and I head up here to the Capitol, and I'm here all day. I take a half hour for lunch, and then uh, I leave around 4 o'clock because I figure there are second shift people who will come down here and be here. I go back home. Um, it was cold. It was brutal the last three days because we couldn't be in here. I can't even tell you how good it feels to be able to be in here because we were outside all day uh, on the concrete in the cold and uh, it's tough you, you know I come home and I crash after that uh, but it's good to be here and back inside to see the sign still up and uh, earlier today we had a great crowd in here around noon uh, all the chanting that was done before the uh, us from coming in was uh, done again it was an excellent experience again it renewed my faith in the fact that people are going to stay involved I'm wearing a t-shirt it has the number 14 on it. And that 14 obviously represents those 14 state senators who are my heroes, and they are out of state. And it's the only leverage we have to stop this bill. So I hope they stay out of state uh, for as long as it takes. And uh, somebody asked me down there, well, Jim, how, how many, how are you going to do this? Are you going to keep coming back? How long are you going to do it? Are you going to keep coming back? What? I said, you know what? My guide for coming back is going to be, However long those 14 senators stay out of this state, 
I'm coming back every day in support of them. So I'll let them be my first guide, and when they come back, I'll decide after that uh, uh, what to do. But there are so many things I could say. This is obviously so much larger than uh, the collective bargaining bill. I think differently than a lot of people because I do a lot of reading and I do a lot of studying. And I have to tell you, this is a corporate uh, power grab of uh, huge proportions. We must remember that most of us ordinary, common, little people, we think of the United States of America as a freestanding nation state with geographic borders, with uh, political uh, uh, borders and entities. But you know, most of the people who are doing this to us, the super rich, the uh, multinational corporations, they don't think like we do. They don't look at the United States as a freestanding nation state. They have stopped looking at us that way many years ago. You have to understand they have interests in France. They have interests in Brazil. They have interests in Argentina. They have interests in Asia, and I could go on. So the world is their oyster. They have five, six, seven homes in different places that they love to go to. So they look at us, really, they, don't, they look at us as an economic colony. We are not a nation state. We are now an economic colony, and we are colonized economically. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you're a major multinational corporation, you have subsidiaries in many different places. And so they look at the United States as one of their subsidiaries. And when you operate a subsidiary in a country, you have to have a board of directors to help you make decisions, to get things done for you. So in effect, the uh, subsidiary board of directors uh, in this country for those large multinational corporations is the United States Congress. That is their subsidiary's board of directors. And in order to get the subsidiary to make things work for you on the ground, of course, you have to pay those folks to serve as your board of directors. And they make that payment in the form of legalized bribery called a campaign contribution. So they make their campaign contribution, which really is a form of legalized bribery, and they get their bidding done. I can tell you without a doubt, if you will please with me, imagine uh, a treasurer of one of these major multinational corporations having a year-end meeting where the treasurer gives his report to the board of directors of the corporation. I will bet you that that treasurer will stand up and he'll have a chart in the front of the room and he'll say, you know what, I have to tell you once again that uh, the amount that we spent that gave us the biggest return for every dollar spent once again was the campaign contributions we made to those people that we supported in Congress. They prevented X, Y, and Z from happening, which would have cost us money, and they allowed X, Y, and Z to happen, which made us millions, billions in some cases. Specific example is the uh, allowance, the, the, the extra subsidies we give to major oil companies. I don't understand why Exxon, who made $30 billion in profit last year, should be given subsidies. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, and they're all over the world. And so... Yeah, so you understand that uh, these things happen and we have to fight them. And we have to take heart that we can win and we will fight them. I've been waiting for years for this battle. I thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to everyone out there. I hope that you join with us and fight this battle in any way that you can in your turf. Thank you.